Message received at 9.21 a.m. August 3 from 3364101. Hi there. Since the voice sounds the same, I'm assuming you are Pete, who has the YouTube video. I just wanted to let you know that um, although I'm not restoring a car, I'm having to work on my lawnmower. I'm unemployed, so I was looking for the cheapest way to remove the rust on the mower deck. I've tried the white vinegar. It works excellently. I appreciate your tips. You might want to throw that in there that it works for anything because this was a hard-fought battle, and it worked really great. I cannot find the rust con in my area, and I don't want to order a case, so I'm in North Carolina, and that would be the only way I could um, get that anywhere. You know, they don't sell locally anywhere around here. But I'm going to use... Um, Rust-Oleum, which I'm hoping is just as well for a paint. But anyway, just wanted to say thank you, and also to tell you, you might want to use that in your videos, that this will work on lawnmower decks. I have a John Deere, and it works excellently. And thank you again. Bye. End of message. Hey, Pete here with a tech tip that's real, real handy for all you guys out there that are painting cars and painting trucks. Especially trucks. Now, you know, you might be painting a tonk. I don't know if you know what a tonk is, or is it called a donk? Anything that's got big giant wheels, this tip is going to help you, the painter guy, out. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. What are we going to do? What are we going to do to make it work the way we want it to? And it's going to be easier on us, our back, and our legs to paint that car or truck that's sitting six feet in the air. Well, you know what? My friend Pete's got the answer. And the answer is right there. If you look, you can see that's a tool. It's a tool, and it's a small tool. But it's got a hole in the end. It's got a slot. What are we looking at? We're looking at the valve stems right here. These are the air valve stems. And what I did, I removed those out of the tire and took the air out of the tire so the truck is basically sitting on the ground. I just got done painting this Chevy truck and uh, what I did, that thing sits up real high in the air, so what I did, I went ahead and took the air out of the tires and uh, made the tires flat. So that's going to drop the truck down approximately six to eight inches down on the ground. And then what we'll do is we go ahead and we put the valve stems back in after we're done painting. Now I didn't take the air out of the back tires because uh, we don't have the bed on it and, you know, I can reach everything up here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our valve stem tool, stick our valve back on the tool, and then screw the stem back in. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, and then uh, what we'll do, we'll air the tires back up, and everything will be just like it was. So if you look, you can see that the truck's sitting at an angle, and you can see, just by flattening the tires to go ahead and paint it, really, really helps you out a lot. I got to air that other tire up right there. I got to get it aired up, get it back up in the air, and the uh, truck's going to be looking good. So for all you guys out there that are tired of breaking your back, bending over, looking like a fool, showing your ass crack when you're painting, and reaching your arms as far as reaching can go, this is the solution for you. Take it easy, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. One more tech tip from DIY Auto School, straight to you. Something you can use on your everyday venture through life. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.